All right, <clears throat> welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do a quick deck side here, developer deck side, dev side, um, just on incremental transforms and some of the problems in working with incremental transforms um, when you're working with media sets. Uh, media sets have a little bit of a challenge right now uh, in doing incremental transforms. Um, so this is the idea that look, you just want to, you don't want to get all of the data. You don't want a snapshot of the data set every time you run a pipeline. Uh, you want just the um, changes to that data set, and this is really important because media sets processing them can be extremely uh, time consuming and, and can be more expensive as well. Uh, so like in my case here, uh, I have my media set input to this pipeline that creates a base64 image of the pages in the PDF. When I added my incremental decorator, uh, kind of all hell broke loose. Right? <laughs> all hell didn't break loose, but it just didn't work. And uh, so I ended up processing the whole data set again. It's a known issue Palantir's working on right now. Um, there's a couple different methods for dealing with it, but I'm gonna show you the most common one and some code from Palantir uh, that sort of solves this problem. But first let's kind of just visualize the the problem we're having and, and see how we're gonna solve it. And we're gonna do that in Solution Designer. All right, <clears throat> so we're in Solution Designer. So gonna, this is a great tool for doing your solution architecture in Foundry. Um, what I'm showing here is the basic problem is that I can't do an incremental um, straight to my transform here. Um, so this would be process images, right? I can't, can't actually do that. Um, the problem is, is that media sets aren't gonna uh, work with the incremental decorator. So what I need is an intermediary data set that will contain uh, just the updated, uh, just the new pages, let's say, of documents based on a composite key that I'm gonna show you how to create. And then I'll output to, uh, I'll output a new data set. Maybe we call this, um, I'm not sure, we'll call it uh, SEC filings incremental, right? And that incremental data set uh, will then feed a new, uh, another my original transform, so I'll be changing uh, the source of my transform to this uh, incremental uh, source, right? And oh, I forgot to rename this here. There we go. All right, so let's just make that a little bigger. Um, if we jump back over here, this is my original code. Um, this is the prepare images uh, transform. So I'm just going to note that in Solution Designer. So uh, let's call this prepare images. Um, and so what I'll end up doing is this incremental source um, will become the input, right? And it won't be a media set anymore. It'll be a data set. And um, what that'll that'll allow me to do is just get the incremental changes from this this uh, data set over here, and then down everything downstream of this transform that relies on the output, which is this SE filing with images will just work. So next up, I'm just gonna show you how to set up an incremental transform like this that can use a composite key when you can't leverage uh, the incremental decorator do the, to do this uh, in the cases of media sets. All right, so this is some code provided by Palantir that will process a data set incrementally um, that will give you just the new pages in the document based on a composite key. I haven't coded that out yet, um, but I will show you an example of that in the future. But the code itself is easily adaptable to solve this problem. Um, basically, you, you are using this incremental decorator and specifying the input data set to be um, the source of the snapshot. And so like Foundry is managing these, uh, the retrieval of these snapshots for you by using this decorator. And you'll be able to then check if the context is running in an incremental fashion. And if it is, we can create a, um, a key a, a, a column key in which we're going to left anti join on, um, and that's going to allow. And that and what we're doing here is we're basically just grabbing the the key and when the key and timestamp, and you can use the timestamp as well. Like if and these could be any columns in your data set that you want to join on or you want to filter by, and that what that will allow you to do is then uh, perform an anti join, which will take out all of the stuff you processed before using your uh, particular columns and your particular values. And then uh, once you have that, uh, there's some arbitrary limiting here. We're, we're not gonna include that. Once you have that done, uh, you'll get just the newly arrived pages uh, from your data set. But the initial processing that takes place of your media set basically has to go through the whole thing in order to produce um, the input data set for this. So you're, you're kind of taking a hit on like whenever you run your pipeline, it is going to 
iterate all over all the pages in your media set and just output a input data set downstream, that's okay. That's not going to be like a huge hit. Um, so hopefully Palantir is going to fix this in the future. I know that they're working on it. But for now, this is probably the best method, which is uh, use this incremental source code that they've provided that will allow you to create your own composite keys. And then um, I'll put this intermediary table. All right, so I got the function just plugged into my code. Um, I just ported it over as a util right now, but I'll probably move this over to a Python library. I added a couple optional parameters uh, to limit the rows. So just like if I'm, I'm not going to limit in production, but when testing, I do limit the rows. Um, other than that, this did just work. Um, you have to be careful just to make sure you enable this incremental decorator correctly uh, against your input uh, column or your input parameter, sorry, uh, which we did here. Uh, the only other thing I had to do uh, was make sure that in the case there's no incremental data because there shouldn't be in this case, I just have to check if um, there were any extracted results uh, that came or there was there was any data from the the incremental portion here. Um, so I just added this conditional, and if not, I'm just producing an empty data frame um, with the correct schema attached. And then um, it's showing there's no no incremental data to um, output, so everything just works. Next, we're going to move on to um, testing this. Uh, when you are working with incremental transforms, this is really important. There's no easy way to know if your incremental transform actually works. So be sure you do this on a feature branch uh, and then test your transform on the feature branch. We're going to do that right now by building this whole data set and I'll show you the output. But data sets also get, um, the output data sets will also get a branch, which you can test on. Okay, so like here's the output data set we're going to produce in just a sec. Or sorry, it's actually uh, this one. Uh, you'll see there's no incremental um, branch for this yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create it by running this thing, building it. Um, and that way you can actually test the effects of this without blowing up your master data set. So be sure to use feature branches and test the whole thing end to end. And as soon as we're done with this, um, I'll show you how to set up incremental transforms and in pipeline builder uh, as well. All right, so I started to build on this branch um, and we'll go ahead and jump over to the output in a second. Make sure we didn't blow anything up. Uh, another, while we wait on that, one other cool thing about um, Solution Designer is you can link your foundry assets via RID. Uh, the resource identifier. Um, so you can copy those RIDs and put them in there and then um, you'll have those linked and you'll see this little green check that verifies that your Foundry component uh, is linked and you can do that for any Foundry asset. It has a RID in which you can copy it and then link it here in Solution Designer. So we'll wait on that transform and I'll show you the output when we're done. Alright, so while we wait on the updated output, uh, another thing we can do is show you how to enable incremental builds in Pipeline Builder. So this is the output data set we're producing as part of this build over here. Oh, looks like it failed, so we're gonna take a look at that in a second. Um, underneath it, you can see this little toggle. Uh, what you wanna do is enable incremental, and then you'll see the downstream uh, transforms will have this little indicator to let you know that these are being processed incrementally. Uh, and then you can go ahead and just save your pipeline. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna save that in both of uh, my pipelines. Um, so we're going to go ahead and enable changes there. Uh, and then in theory, uh, everything should just work. So we'll test it out here. I'm going to fix whatever's broken over here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll test this all out end to end. Okay. So I made a stupid mistake. My output table doesn't have these columns, but this actually brings up a really good point. When you're previewing in, um, foundry, you can't execute incrementally. This is why I was saying it was like super important to create feature branches to test your incremental transforms. You can see here that it's not even attempting to do this portion of the code to uh, do the anti-join because uh, context does not have this, this incremental property on it. So just remember when you're previewing this stuff in Foundry, um, you, you can't actually test it. You got to build the data set to make sure it's working. Hence, you got to make sure to do this on feature branches. All right, cool. Uh, my incremental transform finished. You can see here um, it's done. Got 146 rows. Went to the output table on my branch. <clears throat> uh, there are 146 rows. That means nothing new was added. If we go back to master, for example, <clears throat> and we run that same row count, where C is 146 rows. 
So it didn't process anything new because there isn't anything new. Um, and so that's great. Uh, we Now we're next thing we're gonna test out um, is adding new documents. And I'll, I'm gonna do that in a future episode um, because I, it's gonna take a long time to kind of process. I'm already kind of running long on this video anyway. But I'll publish this code at some point um, so you can take advantage of it. And I do recommend like moving these incremental functions um, to like a Python library so you can reuse them across your projects. And this like schema will probably have to be um, passed as like a variable or something. But um, using using a Python library to share stuff like this is probably going to be the best thing you can do. And again, we'll we'll test this out with some new SEC filings. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is how I'm actually approaching the semantic search application and um, how I'm actually extracting the data here. So what I'm doing is I'm using a combination of um, compute, a computer vision model and uh, the text input from the page. So like what I'm doing is I'm passing to this model, this computer vision model, an image, a base 64 encoded image of the page. And I'm telling it um, to extract table data. Uh, and here are some common types of table data and then to output it as a JSON object in a particular format, which I'm, I'm specifying here. Uh, this is the format I wanna see all that table data in. And it puts it into like a flat format um, downstream. So like I'll show you, I have a pipeline, um, this one here, that takes the output of this, which contains this JSON string, and then explodes that data, uh, which was in a previous episode, into this report data clean, which is a flat representation of all of that table data. By flat, I mean there's like for each item in a table, there's a row, and uh, I can I add index positions and et cetera about um, what goes in there, uh, or sorry, I add index positions so I could reconstitute and reconstruct this table. But this combination of computer vision plus the page text is proving to be um, extremely accurate. I've ran this pipeline multiple times. I'm not getting different data. I'm getting the same data like every time I run it. Um, and here, and again, I've dove into this in a previous episode. I just want to reiterate that this, I think this is a really good approach. Um, so sending both the base 64 image along with the um, page text in the system prompt is leading to really, really good results. But I'll post all this code on GitHub and you guys can grab it there, it'll be useful. This is pretty agnostic to any type of source you want to use for this. So if you've got any kind of um, document that contains tables and you want to extract that information this way, this should work for you. You might need to tweak this prompt a little bit, um, but it probably will just work. Um, the only thing that might be questionable is some of some of this information here and the fact that I'm instructing the model to categorize things as credits or debits. Um, but other than that, it'll probably just work. Uh, cool. So uh, hope you enjoyed this dev side. The next episode, I'm going to break down the semantic search algorithm and how I'm able to get really, really good results with my docky search engine.